So when we're applying the tourniquet, what we want to make sure that we're doing it effectively and correctly is that we're going two or three inches above the wound, okay? You're only really doing this if you're in a nice controlled setting. If it's a high stress situation, you're not really sure where the bleed is coming from and you just need to get that tourniquet on, over the clothes, high and tight, and that's where it comes from, that care, that care under fire phase, okay? But in a controlled setting, two or three inches above the wound is your desired location, okay? How do we know we put it on correctly? So as I demonstrated before, we're going up on the limb, it can go on the lower limb, that's perfectly fine, wherever that bleed is, two or three inches above that point. When you slide it on, the most important part is that we tighten that strap before we start to twist that windlass. Again, pull in nice and tight, you should get an indent in the skin, which should only allow for one to two twists of that tourniquet. Start twisting, and then we're gonna lock it off, okay? Again, it's gonna be quite painful. There's a lot of muscles, nerves, tissues that we're compressing, and it's gonna be very, very uncomfortable for your patient, okay? Once it's in place, again, quickly making sure that bleeding has stopped, okay? Making sure they don't have a pulse if you do have time and the situation allows for it, and then we're gonna lock everything in place, making sure that tourniquet is not gonna come loose. Once you've ridden the time, you've locked it in place, you're happy, okay? We're gonna continue with our blood sweep, making sure we haven't missed any other bleeds or having to apply a tourniquet anywhere else in the body. And then we're gonna come back and recheck our interventions that we've done. As well as if you have to move your patients, okay? If you have to reassess your patient, we're always gonna go back and recheck those tourniquets, okay? Because they can loosen, they can get knocked, so we just want to make sure that they are still working effectively for the duration of the care of that patient. So the application of the soft tea tourniquet is exactly the same as the cat tourniquet. You might find that putting it directly on the skin, you might get a little bit of slippage and I'll show you a way that you can try and combat that, okay? But just be aware that that may occur. So making sure your C-clips are facing uppermost, so it's in your pouch, on your belt, on your vest, um, wherever you've located it. So when I grab it with my good hand to put it on my injured arm, okay? C-clips are facing uppermost. I'm gonna throw it out, making sure that tail is facing towards the heart. If you've set it up correctly, that should always fall facing towards the heart, regardless of what arm you grab it with. From there, we slide it over the arm, just like the cat tourniquet. And here you're gonna get a bit of slippage on the skin. So the best way to do it is try to pull up nice and tight and keeping pressure, we're gonna to start to cinch it down. You're gonna to have to move your hands back into the inside, closer to the buckle, up, tension still on that strap, and cinching it down until you've got some pressure on that skin. Again, this is very, very vital that we put enough pressure on that, the windlass, or sorry, on the strap, so that we minimize how many twists we need to do. From there, once you're happy that it's nice and secure, we're just gonna start twisting the windlass exactly like the cat tourniquet. Once you're happy that that bleeding has stopped, they don't have a distal pulse, into those C-clips, and then with that triangle, we can feed it through as an additional safe or secure measure, okay? So we focused on the arm before. Um, the principles apply exactly the same. You apply the same principles when you want to put it on your leg, okay? There's a few little things we need to be aware of, and that is that the muscle in your leg is a lot larger than your arm, depending who you are and depending what you work at the gym, okay? But essentially, we just need to be aware that we may have to apply more than one tourniquet to the leg, okay? Um, if you do have a double amputee that you're dealing with and there's two of you working on that patient, we just want to make sure that we're pulling that windlass, or sorry, that tail away. So we're not pulling towards each other, okay? We're pulling away from our patient. Um, put it on the patient's leg. Um, depending what injuries they have, you might find it a lot quicker and a lot easier to just pull everything apart and feed it through, okay? So how we do that, we pull it apart, we place the pressure bar facing upwards on the good leg, and then we start to feed the, um, the tail 
underneath the bad leg, okay? High and tight, depending on the situation, or three to five inches above the, um, sorry, two to three inches, inches above the wound, okay? Once we've fed it through, again, just like you set it up, we feed it through that buckle, okay? And from here, we grab that tail, we grab that pressure bar, and we pull it down, making sure we've got indent in that skin to show we've got enough pressure. Once you're happy, we then just loop it around, keeping pressure, putting that Velcro on itself, and then we start to twist that windlass. Once you've done that, you should be able to just feed the rest of that stuff through, lock everything in place, and right that time, making sure that bleeding has stopped, okay? And then you can feel for your different pulses moving down that leg, behind the knee, or down on the foot, and so forth, okay? If you do need to put another tourniquet on, okay, you want to go as close as possible to that last tourniquet. Obviously trying to offset that windlass, making sure we're not going to get caught in, um, caught in with each other. One thing I forgot to mention before about where our pressure bar and where our windlass needs to go, okay, a good thing to remember, okay, is that your tourniquet is parallel and your windlass is uppermost. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got my windlass facing uppermost, so it's not getting caught in the groin, or it's not underneath my leg, making it difficult to twist. And as well, you're making sure that tourniquet is parallel, okay? If it's a little bit skew if you just risk the chance of that tourniquet loosening, and then sliding down that leg, causing your patient to bleed out. So when it comes to applying the soft tea tourniquet, again, exact same principles apply. The one thing to note is just getting that buckle off, okay, we're not trying to rip it, rip it, rip it. What we want to do is we just want to fold it back on itself and then we just want to twist it, twist it out of that, um, that clip, okay. From there, exact same principle, pressure bar or the base of that material facing uppermost, slide it underneath that leg, reach it around, lock it onto that clip. Grasp that windlass like a lawnmower, grasp that tail, and then we pull down as tight as possible, okay? Twisting that bar, making sure that you can slide those back or forth, depending where they need to go. Lock everything in place. Now we don't have the Velcro to lock that on them, so we just wanna make sure we tuck all of that in place, okay? We don't want someone stepping on that, pulling that tourniquet down, that getting caught on a doorway, or it's hanging off the side of a stretcher when you're carrying your patient, okay? Same principle, if you need to apply a second one, as close as possible to that first one, okay? If you can't go above it, just go below it, as close as possible, okay? To making sure you're getting enough pressure on those tissues. Again, making sure your patient still isn't bleeding, making sure you can't feel any pulses distal of that injury, okay? Um, same principles apply every time we move our patient, every time we do a reassessment, we come back and we, re we recheck or we reassess those interventions that we've applied to make sure they have not failed and they are still working effectively. Um, once your tourniquets are on and when the time permits, we're going to start looking at packing and wrapping that wound, okay? To again, making sure there's clots start to form in that wound so that when they do get to surgery, they can potentially loosen off that tourniquet and start doing what they need to do in that facility.